The following is a campaign based off the Savage Worlds role-playing game. We are not saying that we own Savage Worlds or any of its content. We are just a bunch of guys wanting to play a game. Without further ado, enjoy the show. So, we're going to start off our scene. You all, the three of you are currently in a room. You're all in different seats and stuff. You look around and you actually see each other. Um, so, and, you know, you have a little while before mm -hmm. the director gets in and starts talking to you. Uh, so it might be a good idea, a good point to kind of introduce everybody's characters to each other. Uh, so we'll start off with, uh, shit here. we'll start off with Adam. All right. So I guess I'm currently looking like just a regular generic human. Yeah. Just whatever image you tend to like naturally lean on just in general. Just to try to get it out of the way. I'm going to go over and we're set. I mean, are we just like kind of in like a waiting room type like, of a deal? You're is actually that, like in an office or at, you're at a table, well, a like long a table. Conference room. Conference, conference room. room. Yeah, you're, you're waiting right now for the director to come in and talk to you. You have a few moments to actually talk to each other. All right, just to try this out to figure out, I'm going to, whoever's across from me at the table, reach over to shake a hand. I reach back with a very, very firm grip. Al. Al, I say I'm Jen, and then I want to try to change to look like him. Just uh, get that way he kind of gets a... Give me a persuasion test. Give me a persuasion test. Okay, so I got a five. Right, so you so, need a four. Yeah. So you, my dear friend, see him turn to a damn perfect likeness of yourself. <laughs> he promptly swings at you. Okay. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> well, go ahead. Roll. <laughs> uh, I, I, I think I wait, oops. seven. Oh, oh, yeah, because oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, your your parry is a four, right? Yes. All right. We, go ahead and roll. Like you hit him. Go ahead and roll your damage. It's going to be your strength die. D eight. Doesn't he eight? Add, does he add his wild die to it? Or does he also It explodes, it? too. Yeah. Well, yeah. you decided to do this. It was your well, choice. Yeah, Go right. for it. Yeah, you keep rolling and adding it on top of it. Seven. <laughs> so, 15. So. Ow. Oh. Really? Yeah. Like, really already? <laughs> <laughs> this is going off well. So, what's your toughness there, Adam? It's a seven. seven. So, you did 15. Yeah. So that means that whenever it hit the seven, yeah. So the next four points after that would be an actual woo, like that. That shot, that shaking him. Yeah. Then you did four points after that. So at eleven, it was a wound. At fifteen, it's two wounds. Yeah. So in one hit, you've done basically two wounds. You can spend one of your very few bennies and roll a bigger roll and try to soak the wound, try to soak up the wounds and shit. Okay. So as unlucky. I start yep. out with one less Benny. Yes. Yep. Mean, yeah. It was up to three. Okay. So I should probably I'll spend just give the you two. Basically, the Bennies. So don't worry about writing it down. Okay. Because they will shift a lot during mm -hmm. gameplay. Gotcha. Um. So take the one for me being unlucky. Now, are right. Bennies only used to heal yourself? Or can you use them for rerolls? You can use them for rerolls or for healing yourself. They're one of the most valuable commodities you will ever have, and you will quickly run out of them. You spin one and you roll a bigger roll. Got it, got it, got it. And I'm looking for a what on the bigger roll? You have to at least succeed. For every success you get, it reduces it by one wound. Both of them right and take whatever the... Five. So you reduce it by one wound. You could spin another mini and try again. <laughs> so, quam! Now it has a black eye. <laughs> And you have curved currently one wound. Now, whenever you take a wound, you have negatives upon like any sort of any sort of trades, any sort of trade rolls you have to do. Trade rolls are attributes and skills. Well, so, does he have any since he passed both two? of them? No, 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 no. Uh, when you spend it, yeah. you roll for that hit. Yeah. Okay. He spent another one to try to roll higher, and it could explode oh, okay. to soak up more, more of the wounds. damage gotcha. you dealt with your one punch. Right. I was trying to. 
not get fucked up. Yeah. I will help him back up off the floor. <laughs> so Alex. You're definitely yeah. you know, and a little bit shaken right now. So you right now you have one wound on you. Yes. You just punch a guy in the face. You uh, have to watch the whole thing with your camera. Yeah. I have <laughs> I guess you guys didn't realize I have my camera out and I'm just yeah. Just so why don't you introduce your character now that you've established... <laughs> as, as I help it, it off the floor and light a cigarette. Jen. Alex. <laughs> so how are you spelling Jen? J-I-N. J-I-N. Oh, okay. Almost like Jen, but like Jen. Yes. Okay. So kind of like, yeah, GD Jen or like Jennifer, but you don't know because... <laughs> so, Alex, how would you describe your character right now? I know he's not probably not going to show off. As a, <clears throat> about 6'8", 275. You are currently hand. in your humor, human form. Yes. You would not be 6'8". And if you are 6'8", then he in particular should at least know that it's probably a bad idea yeah. to have done that at the beginning. Yeah. Right? And that would have been probably a bit more telling. I would have probably turned into him when I introduced myself. <laughs> then 6'2 uh, uh, work a little yeah, better. Yeah, that works a little better, yeah. All right, there you go. So, uh, how about you introduce yourself now, uh, Editor D? Hmm? Okay. Uh, basically, I have no hair. Um, I kind of envisioned that uh, I guess I could be wearing my flag jacket. Uh, nah, uh, you see me just basically wearing like really comfortable clothing, sort of like, for a bad, uh, for lack of a better word, sort of like a almost Buddhist monk, it's like a cloak of something, basically. Mm, he's wearing robes. Yeah, robes, robes that's right. it. And uh, my name is Behim, and I, I'm just going to say I'm, I'm a husk. So, And I, let's see. Um, you I do also tend to notice that where his joints are, it looks like it's cracked and broken, and they're small. There's a little wisp of smoke that are coming out of yep. those little edges. And stuff. Okay. And I tell um, him briefly that mm-hmm. I am uh, working on my next big motion picture. I am a filmer, a, a filming, a filmer director. And you see me just like filming you guys. You better see me. Well, yes, I do. <laughs> And he then goes back together. He's like, dude. <laughs> a little bit of super glue, duct tape is good. Um, <laughs> this could turn out really bad, really fast. All right. So, um, you picked up off the ground. You kind of dust yourself yep. off, right? And he, if he helped you out. And uh, and you, of course, have it all on film. Or, like, looking at the footage, like, I can work with this, right? Okay. Uh, so as you know, you're kind of starting to get resettled back in. Oh, yeah. A a a hu- obviously human man walks in. He has a you know short cropped hair. He's wearing sunglasses inside of a building, which is again kind of like um, cliche much, right? Uh, comes in, sits down, and is like takes a look at the three of you, and it's like, gentlemen, and you recognize them as the director of this branch of the API organization. I, uh, I drop the looking like him and go back to what it was I was looking like. What, what, what branch are we, where are we at anyway? We'll say, we'll say like the one best place for you to be able to be and not because you're a film person and you're a person that kind of like goes around all over the place anyways, but you're also kind of a little bit copy. Uh, California? Yeah. <laughs> so the director sits down and he starts, he addresses you. Know, it's like, gentlemen. It's like, I don't think you really picked a. Uh, it's more than likely the generic. You're kind, kind of like, I'm, I'm kind of like an androgynous yeah. look. Androgynous to you, male. Yeah. So you're not really quite sure which one, just basically. Just, okay. if, if I'm in a forum where it's to, to not scare people, it's probably just a generic looking male figure of yeah. some. Mm-hmm. Just as as generic and unstand as yes. possible. Yes. To where like you almost stand out because you don't stand out. So Correct. Much. Correct. <laughs> um. All right. So we're meeting with him, in Sunny Sokal. All right. So steps in. Yes. Sits down. It's like, gentlemen. It's like I'm glad to see that you've already started <clears throat> introducing yourselves to each other. I point the camera at him. 
He looks right at you. He's like, I would ask you to stop recording during our meeting. But I need to get a good shot. He just stares at you blankly for a few (laughs) seconds. You can't really read too well what's going on right there. But you get the feeling that he's I not going to budge I more mean, than, like, the husks themselves. <laughs> I mean, okay, I give him a benefit of the doubt when I shut my camera, but honestly, I could care less. <laughs> Are you a, I'm assuming you're a younger person would be... A husk lifespan is yes. up to 300 years. No, I'm saying I'm about 80, 90 years old. Like, a husk lifespan is, yes. Compared to most people, it's going to gotcha. be a lot longer. I'm saying I'm 80, 90 years old, and I've only recently... So you're relatively young in your young stage for a uh, yes. is what? Okay. He hasn't done everything yet, so he's not already bored with being a film director. Okay. Yeah, yeah this is a new thing that <laughs> that Behem has taken interest in, so he's tackling, tackling it full force, basically. All or nothing! Well, Fuck the bitches. Jeez. He's already right up on you. He, know, he knows what you can do. Don't... Yeah. Oh, I, I know. I don't care about that. I just want to... I'm, I'm practicing shots here. He's learning to get the good angle. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. Andy. That's her thought All right. Um, all right. So, I'm sure at this point you're kind of wondering why I've brought, called you in. Uh, we have a small situation where I kind of want a small force to go in and investigate. Minimize any damage, please, as he pointedly looks over at Alex. Uh, don't piss anyone off, as he pointedly looks over at Jen. And he pauses for a second, and you see an eyebrow raise from behind his glasses, as he actually scrutinizes you a little bit better. It's like almost like he noticed something's off about you. Hmm. And, of course, to capture any and all hmm, information we can, even down to recording. And he pointedly looks over at the heat. Um, <clears throat> he's like, gentlemen, and he, refer, and he basically pulls up a little clicker and click, and up behind him shows up an, an island of some sort. Even no, no one of you have really recognized or seen before. Um, in fact, just from like looking at it, it you, the best you can tell is it shouldn't be too far away, but the fact that you've never seen anything really like it is kind of off-putting in a sense. Um, you do notice, uh, let's see, who actually is trained to notice? Like even one point of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, you do notice fairly quickly that it appears to be like in certain sections of this island, especially from the aerial view, that there tends to be large amounts of webbing all over it. Um, gentlemen, this picture is of an island that, that's been taken... Mm, more about a week ago. Uh, on this island, there was a research facility that, to the general public, was completely unknown or unheard of. Uh, they were researching various various things of which we don't really have any direct knowledge of, but we do have an insider who was feeding us any important knowledge that may be of concern on a more global scale. Um, a week ago... The last transmission we received from him uh, ended abruptly, and from what we were able to gather, there was some sort of breach in their containment. Uh, It is unknown what caused this, and whether or not our contact is still alive. I do ask that if it is possible to try and find and save this particular contact, as he has proved useful time and time again in more than one situation. Um... You will be arriving to this island by boat. I have already made arrangements, so you don't have to worry about paying the boatman off any. Uh, he will go in, he will drop you off, and he will come back in four days. So you have four days to search this island and find the contact and get any information that may be relevant towards the situation. And if possible, step, stomp out this fire that's sprung up here in the, before it turns into something that could be worse. Um, <clears throat> so, gentlemen, I'm sure you all have like your gear prepared and ready. We'll be leaving in 24 hours. I hope you are prepared for this. Uh, as is a standard, you will be paid $500 each for success and additional $1,000 each if you manage to recover anything 
of grandiose worth, including a specimen, if there is anything to be taken. Okay. Right. And Does the specimen need to be alive or? Preferably. Okay. And he stands up. Have a good day, gentlemen. And he leaves. Close the door behind him. I so say he's editing it anyway. He can put whatever he wants. I know it's even every time. Worse. Every time you talk, he just piece case it together. I like dicks and <laughs> <laughs> I, I like dicks and wieners. Yeah. It's like, oh, <laughs> he completely pieced that together. But well, you see, since you just said, I don't even need to do the editing right <laughs> but, now. <laughs>